It's always a little weird when I remember that in 12 years, I'll probably be starring in the next Batman movie. So you might have heard about this weird horror flick that's playing in theaters this month, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. It's selling itself as like a darker and more twisted take on the character popularized by Walt Disney. They're able to do this because its source material, A.A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh, originally published in 1926, is now a part of the public domain. That is, this publication is no longer covered by intellectual property rights. So anybody is now free to take this book and publish it for themselves, or or create derivative works based on its storyline and characters really no holds barred. Like, if you want to make a sci-fi Winnie the Pooh action movie, go for it, bud. Nothing's stopping you. Under the current United States copyright system, anything made before 1978 enters public domain 95 years after it was first published. It's 2023, so Pooh's time has arrived. Keep in mind, it's this Pooh from the original work, Disney's iteration of the character with all its creative peculiarities, and continuity, that's all still under copyright, and Disney still maintains all their related trademarks. So you can make something based off this, not this. Over the next few years, lots of interesting works will start to lose their copyright protection. Next year, Steamboat Willie hits 95. The year after that, a Farewell to Arms. A year after that, the novel Scarface. And starting in the year 2035, the Golden Age comic book character known as the Batman, originally appearing in 1939's Detective Comics issue 27. In a little over a decade, it too will fall into the public domain, and anyone anyone will be able to create derivative works based on it. Sort of. Don't forget, we're only talking about the 1939 Detective Comics Batman. Any Batman-related publications outside of that is still under copyright. So although you can use the original Batman character, the character and storyline in its modern iteration is still locked down. This is important because a lot of what we like about Batman is actually stuff added to the continuity by DC decades after the character character's first appearance. You can't use any of that. So if you're going to make a Batman movie, that means no sidekick named Robin, no Nightwing, no Batgirl, no Catwoman, no Joker, no Harley Quinn, nada. No rogues gallery at all. No fancy Batmobile. He drove a regular car. No Alfred, no Bat Signal, no Gotham City, no Arkham Asylum, no Wayne Enterprises, no grappling hook, no lifting iconic images or music from later iterations. All of that stuff came after 1930. 39, thus, it will still be the property of the original rights holders. So, based on the original comic, here's what you can use. A rich socialite named Bruce Wayne, who moonlights as a mysterious crime fighter named the Batman, with a costume that looks like this. He's friends with a police commissioner, Gordon, and is more of a freelance detective than anything. Peep that Sherlock Holmes-style pipe. You can feel free to cop this totally Ace's 1930s fashion sense. He faces off against villains like the Chemical Syndicate, a jewel thief named Frenchie Blake, the dastardly Dr. Death, the Scarlet Horde, a hypnotist monk. There's a story where Bruce's fiance is attacked by a werewolf. It's weird. Also, the earliest Batman evidently had no issue with guns or killing people, which of course seems odd to those only familiar with his modern iteration. Now, the good news is that as long as you use this original source material as your starting foundation, you can feel free to build atop of it any kind of continuity you see fit, as long as it's not, you know, the same as something else that's still under copyright. So you could make a Wild West Batman, a bubbly teen romance Batman. By the way, you know Netflix is gonna do that, right? If they're still around, they're definitely going to do that. Even an oddball expressionist iteration. The limits are truly your own imagination. The moment January 1st, 2035 arrives, the Batman is unbound. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Anyone who decides to actually do this will undoubtedly face an uphill legal battle from Warner Brothers Discovery, or whatever company buys them out in the next decade, because the United States is, we've been here before. Originally, you could only hold the copyright for 14 years, then it became 28, then you could get a renewal for another 28, then 75, now we're at 95 years. The can has basically been kicked further and further down the road as time has gone on, and companies have realized that they can still make a lot of money off of their oldest works. I fully expect that within the next decade, an army of lobbyists with fat wallets will get Congress to extend copyright protections retroactively once again, and this will all probably come to naught, but still, I 
guy can dream. Another thing to consider is, again, trademark protection, which is a completely separate issue from copyright. Companies that have a registered trademark can hold on to it for as long as they keep using it. So definitely don't count on being able to use Batman as your movie's title, nor any other image or term on this extended list of what DC Entertainment currently owns. In all honesty, I'm sort of just waiting to see how this poo thing works out before taking any heavy pre-production steps on my Detective Comics 27 epic. And hey, if 12 years is too long for you to wait and you'd like a bit of a head start, you're in luck because Superman's story enters public domain a year earlier. And a year after Bats, Wonder Woman's copyright will have expired as well. So while the internet is currently ablaze about DC kicking Cavill, Affleck, and Gal Gadot to the curb, don't fret too much because not too long from now they can just make their own movies and cast themselves. Squarespace sponsored this video, and if you're a creator, they want to help build you an online home. They make designing a website a breeze. Just select from one of their beautiful templates, and then you can customize it to the way that works best for you. Let's say you want to start a podcast, but you don't want to waste a bunch of time dealing with annoying logistics. Their audio blocks feature handles it for you. Maybe you want to build a private community. They offer member areas. Even if you have an idea for a business, they can help you set up your online storefront. You you can check it out for free by starting a trial at squarespace.com. If you like the experience, and I think you will, then when you're ready to launch your site in full, head over to squarespace.com slash Austin McConnell to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.